a little different from the other speakers. I'm a teacher from the foreign country, so I'm sorry for the trouble to understand my accent. And uh, now let's uh, begin my slide. This is uh, the, my disclosure, nothing to disclose. The damage control surgery was first described in 1996, and a sevenfold improvement in mortality in severely ill patients was demonstrated using DCS in the text. And the core strategy of DCS can be grouped into three phases. That is, abbreviated initial laboratory, resuscitation of physiology, and then the delayed definitive surgery. And we can see that uh, damage control search strategy is a well thought out procedure. And which po uh, it po focuses on the uh, continuum of care and priority, the restoration of deranged physiology settings above definitive organ repair. And now the concept has, has been transferred to non-traumatic abdominal emergencies. Then the clonic stain placement was first reported in the same stage, that is in 1990s. As an alternative to urgent surgery, it converts emergent operation to elective surgery, and then the surgery can be performed by optimum colorectal surgical team. And the maybe sometimes laparoscopic surgery and the potential single stage procedures becomes uh, possible. Um, the core principles of uh, damage control surgery and uh, bridge two uh, surgery is similar. And uh, uh, the first stage of BTS is clonic stent placement. Sometimes it can be regarded as the minimized laparotomy, and then the physician can be have the opportunity to perform medical resuscitation and uh, evaluate tumor stage. Then the subsequent definitive. Uh, elective surgery can be performed. The objective was to uh, investigate the clinical advantages of the application of damage control strategies to treat colorectal cancer patients with acute colorectal obstructions. My thoughts, uh, we can show the, uh, clearly in the, the follow slide, that is the flow chart. Uh, 173 78 patients was treated with a stint during the period. And patients, 90, 98 patients with distant metastasis was excluded. And at last, the total of 88 patients was enrolled. And only one patient was uh, grouped into technical failure because of the failed and get passment. The the other 87 patients was grouped into technical success, and the uh, 1979 patients was, can be observed the clinical success. <coughs> At last, for, um, 71 patients underwent laparoscopic surgery. This is the characteristics of the patients, and we can see that the mean age is a 68, and uh, more, uh, nearly half of the patients was pre pre present, present with uh, comorbidities. And the technical success is near more than 98%, and the clinical success is nearly 90%. Uh, performation was, uh, occurred in two patients, and the migration occurred in three, and re uh, obstruction in one patient. The surgery related characteristics and post the alternative complications are listed as, 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 as this. And uh, we can see that the uh, temporary stoma rate formation rate is 12.5% uh, percent, and the permanent, permanent stoma rate, uh, stoma rate is 4.5%. Uh, the acute obstruction is featured as closed loop intestine, and the patient often associated with long time poor food intake and tissue edema and bowel ischemia, so which can lead to massive distended clone. 
And uh, so the patient sometimes is associated with bacterial translocation and the electrolyte imbalance. And the, uh, as the, the same reasons that the patient is associated is generally older, and the bowel is sometimes uh, distended massively. So the traditional surgery is a, a approach is emergency surgery. But this emergency surgery is always carries high morbidity and mortality rates. And uh, uh, the emergency surgery is requires two-stage procedures, either primary resection and proximal diversion, and uh, followed by lateral closure of the stoma. Or primary decretion through stoma formation and uh, lateral clonic resection. So the emergency surgery is always with the poor prognosis, low primary uh, uh, anastomosis rate, and the high stomach rate. And sometimes in is laparoscopic, uh, laparoscopic surgery is infeasible. So where should we go in these circumstances, the ES or the BTS? And the uh, first let's look up, looks, uh, looks through the guidelines through different uh, different years and the different countries, like the controversies still exist. The guidelines from the uh, ACPGBI published in 2006, they decided that uh, in the absence of science about preparation, the use of SEMs should be considered for all patients who have uh, bowel or malignant large bowel obstruction, but the up updated uh, in 2017 and those uh, Luminal staining can be considered in selected cases. However, in ESDE guidelines published in 2014, the use of self uh, stains is not recommended because of the concerns about oncological safety. However, when we look back into the uh, travels and the text in a deep play, we can see that the unfavorable oncological long-term outcome is sometimes associated with the low technical success rate and high performance rates. That is different from different in different trials. So we can speculate that the experience of the therapeutic endoscopist is probably one of the key factors in achieving acceptable survival rituals. And we, when we look through the recent uh, papers, we can see that the uh, results is different. The latest meta-analysis published in 2017, and the eight RCTS was concluded that is similar. And uh, uh, the latest RCT and the longest follow-up uh, also showed the sim similar results. In the present study, no tactile information was observed, and based uh, so the present study is associated with a uh, uh, acceptable stoma rate, uh, stoma rate ratio and uh, morbidity rate. And uh, so, based on this data, we can conclude that the surgery. <clears throat> Stains surgery by, followed by surgery using the principles of damage control surgery is feasible and safe. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>